In this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your ANIT A8 to 24 volts, and we're starting right now. Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. I would like to help you being more successful with 3D printing. And if you're here for the first time, please consider subscribing. So let's start right into it. The thing that annoys me the most about this printer is the bad heat up time, honestly. It's taking so long for this bad to heat up to a decent temperature. Let's say you wanna heat it up to 60 degrees, and I did a quick test here, and that shows me, okay, it takes 11 minutes from 18 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius to heat up the bag, and that's pretty, pretty long. So what can we do about that? So the idea of this upgrade is now um, to get the printer to 24 volts for powering um, almost everything on this printer. So the basically the point is you probably want to have a new power supply and you already have the new mainboard 1.7 but the thing uh, that you need to understand is it's just not that simple because everything needs to be powered correctly and why is that the case? Let's check out the setups that we normally find with these printers and we're starting with the default 12 volt setup. So this is basically what you get as, as a kind of a setup if you buy the printer and you have no modifications done to it. So you have a power supply with 12 volts and then you also have the main board at 12 volts which is powering a filament fan, the extruder fan, the bat and also the hot end. Everything is 12 volt. But to increase the safety and also prevent something from failing on the main board I already upgraded my setup in one of the previous videos to a MOSFET based setup. That means I'm using two MOSFETs to draw the power directly from the power supply and feed it to the bed and also to the hot end. And the MOSFETs on the mainboard are just triggering those MOSFETs. So we are basically bypassing the mainboard in terms of the power that drives the bed and the hot end. So that's already a pretty safe setup. Um, and when we change to 24 volts, we have to understand that basically everything will change. So let's have a look at a default 24 volt setup that you might find, for example, in the new ANIT A8 Plus. So it means the power supply is 24 volts, the main board is 24 volts. So this main board here, the 1.7 version, would already support 24 volts. That is good. But what you also have to see, like we have now two or three fans on the sprinter and we would have to replace all fans with 24 volt capable fans. Because if you would power the 12 volt fans with 24 volts, they would probably run at a much higher speed and at some point overheat and burn through. And also the same for the heat bed. Why can't we just power a 12 volt heat bed with 24 volts? I'm gonna come to that point in a moment and also the same for the hard end. So basically everything is 24 volts now. So to understand why it's not that easy, and for the fans it's probably pretty obvious, but for why it's not so easy for the bat and also for the hot end, let's have a look at Ohm's law. So we wanna know how much current is running through our heat bed, for example. We need to know the voltage that is 24 volts or 12 volts, and then we also need to know the resistance. So to measure the resistance we need a tool that can measure resistance in ohms, which is, for example, this simple Wardcraft tool, but there is a lot of other tools that can measure the resistance. And in my case, I found that value. And then we will be able to calculate the current that's running through the bed. And that's calculated by taking the voltage, dividing it by the resistance, and then we get the current. So now let's do a quick calculation of current and power consumption for the 12 volt setup and then for the 24 volt setup. Starting with the 12 volt setup on this heat bed, we have measured out a resistance of 2.3 ohms and we're powering it with 12 volts, which means the current is calculated by dividing the power with the resistance. That's 12 volts divided by 2.3 ohms, which gives us 5.2 amps which is the current that's flowing through the heat bed. And the power consumption is calculated by multiplying the voltage with the current, which means 12 volt times 5.22 amps, which gives us a power consumption of around 62 watts. So 62 watts, that sounds not too bad, but if you think about how much power a water boiler, for example, consumes, which might be between 1000 and 2000 watts, that sounds pretty small 
and you have to imagine that 62 watts have to power the heat bed up to your desired temperature, be it 60 degrees Celsius or 80 degrees Celsius. And it also has to keep that power while the print is going. So the fans are blowing on it. The part is actually sucking out a lot of power. And that's one of the reasons why we actually want more power to this heat bed. But there comes a problem. So with the 24 volts and the same kind of bed, we get twice the current. That sounds reasonable, but we actually get four times the power consumption because we have 24 volt multiplied by 10 amps instead of five amps. And this gives us 250 watts of power consumption. So that sounds a lot of power. Um, that's going to heat up the bed much, much faster, but there is a problem. The problem is that this bed, which comes with the init 8 is not rated for 24 volts. So what does it mean? It means that it was built for 12 volts. It was built for this kind of power consumption, this kind of heat emission, and it wasn't built to be four times as powerful. And if you look at the bottom of this heat bed, you will see that the little strings, the copper wires that run through this bed are very thin. And you can imagine if you do four times the heat emission, these things might melt. And that's a fact. You can try it, but it's on your own risk. What I would strongly recommend instead is getting another heat bed that's actually rated for 24 volts or which you can convert to a 24 volt heat bed. And for example, this is one where this is possible. I'm using the Anycubic Ultra Base um, together with the glass plate. Why am I using this one instead of uh, another one? I found it, it's going to be much cheaper than uh, comparable models. And you can convert it from 12 volt to 24 volts, as you can see here. And I've done that already. So you just have to change some of the solderings um, and then it's ready to be powered by 24 watts. And the other fact uh, about this Anycubic Ultra Base is it has the same amount of resistance. So it has 2.3 ohms at 24 volts. That means you can actually power this with 250 watts and it's capable of doing that and you don't have to be afraid that anything is going to melt. So finally, we have to think about what kind of parts do we need for the 24th volt setup, which parts can we keep and which parts do we need to replace? And we have already said, okay, we're using a 24 volt um, bed and we wanna keep the existing fans, we wanna keep the existing uh, heating cartridge for the nozzle. So everything is gonna stay at 12 volt instead of the heat bed. And how is that done? Um, look at this um, new drawing here, which shows you we are using now a 24 volt power supply, which drives a MOSFET that controls the heat bed. And you have to make sure that at least the one MOSFET it's going to drive the heat bed is capable of taking 24 volts and switching that. In my case, that's possible. So I'm going to link my MOSFETs down below. The main board is going to stay at 12 volt. Um, that's good because you can keep your existing main board. You don't have to switch to the 1.7 version if that's just for the voltage change. And to do that, you need to use a step down converter. It's going to look like this. So it, this is coming from cars and boats. It converts 24 volts down to 12 volt. And that's going to drive the main board and also everything that's behind the main board, which will be the fans staying at 12 volt and also the main board fan if you have one. And finally, the hot end is going to be driven with 12 volt. Probably in the future, I'm going to replace the heating cartridge for the hot end as well to drive it with 24 volts. But currently I just wanna know how much is changing with the heat bed heat up times with 24 watts. So let's start implementing this upgrade. I'm going to wire everything up and then we're going to look at a final test. Compared to previous test at 12 volt, which took 11 minutes, I'm pretty curious how long it will take. And stop. So it took one minute, 55 seconds to heat up to 60 degrees. I'm, I'm actually, I'm impressed. So this is this is um, faster than I'd really expected. Probably Ultra Base is doing a good job, but think about it. We, t we had a time of 11 minutes heat up time from 18 to 60 degrees using the 12 volt setup and, and the old base. And now we're using the new Ultra Base 
at 24 volts, which is using 250 watts of power instead of 60 watts for the old setup. And now, like 1 minute 55, that's just amazing, that's mind blowing. Okay, and now finally, I wanna walk you through what I've done, how I've done the changes. First, let's start with the power supply. That was an easy replacement. It is basically in the same position as the old one, so even the old screw positions were the same, which is amazing. Um, then I've zip-tied the step-down converter just on top of the power supply, which looks pretty well. I'm also using cable shoes and very rigid connectors everywhere to make sure no cables can slip out. So here on the other side of the printer you can see that everything is basically staying the same except this one cable which is now um, powering this one MOSFET that drives the heat bed with 24 volts. I've also marked it with a little bit of a tape to not confuse it. And that's basically it. So it was an easy exchange. Um, I'm happy that it worked out so well and it really heats up so fast. I'm also giving the Anycubic Ultrabase a decent test now uh, over the next course of weeks to find out what are the pros and cons. I'm gonna give you a review afterwards. So I hope this video was informational and useful for you. If you wanna upgrade to 24 volts on your ANIT A8 or probably any other printer that's similar. And you will find the links to all the parts I used in the description down below. So see you next time. Bye bye.